So let me be perfectly clear. This is not a normal League Start POB that some random player should be trying to follow. This is my personal POB that I have adapted into a basic guide for the people in my community. They're going to be like, Big Ducks, I see you making a lot of money and a lot of currency and stuff on League Start with this bow build. How, what, what do I do? This is for them and for pretty much nobody else. That being said, if you are a relatively experienced player in this game and you're familiar with bow builds, this will probably work pretty well for you if you wanna go really fast and you wanna make a bunch of currency early in the league. Now, what are we talking about here? So this is a bow build and surprise and shock to basically everyone, the already most powerful league start archetype got massive buffs this league. If you would have went back to when I was making the bingo for the 3.23 reveal and said, hey, big ducks, put bow buffs on there, I probably would have laughed at you. However, uh, that was then and this is now. Bow League is once again in full force. Now, why is this? In my opinion, one of the main reasons is that Tornado Shot no longer needs a helmet enchant, meaning that for an experienced player, you're most likely going to be able to swap to Tornado Shot as early as the first few days. And keep in mind, all of the footage you're seeing in the background is in a non-optimized setup without a helmet enchant and just some random gear that I cobbled together from my lightning arrow character from last league. So this is by no means an ideal circumstance. Alongside that, we've gotten quite a bit of new tech that I first saw on Rue's stream about how to maintain Berserk even on an elemental based build. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I do think that this tech is potentially bugged or it is potentially not intended to work this way because the way that it is working is we are getting a trigger of a trigger which typically does not work. Now while I don't think there is a high likelihood of this tech being nerfed before the league launches, there is some possibility of it. But do keep that in mind. The way that this works is that we're using mana forged arrows to proc frenzy, which is a pretty normal thing for bow builds, it provides us frenzy charges, and then you typically link that to power charge on crit to have maxed out power charges at all times. This of course, as standard, is linked with life tap so that we can cast it as often as we possibly can. However, the new tech that's been found is that if you link cast on crit to a mana forged arrow setup, the cast on crit does happen to proc. So this means that a triggered ability is triggering another ability, and the ability that we are casting on crit is Warlord's Mark. This along with the mastery on the tree that makes it so that marks transfer to a new enemy upon being killed leads us to having some pretty insane rage generation even without the old comb spirit. Now there's one further problem to deal with when it comes to an elemental type bow build. For a physical based build, there's essentially no problem here. However, Warlord's Mark and the way that it works is that when you stun an enemy, you gain rage. However, if an enemy is frozen, it can't be stunned. So we need a way that we're going to be disabling our freeze and chill, and the two methods that we have to disable freeze are going to be Gale Sight early on, as well as Secrets of Suffering later. This does mean that we will be giving up freeze, chill, shock, and ignite, even though we didn't really use ignite. However, in the very end game with Secrets of Suffering, we are gaining Brittle, Scorched, and Sapped, which are all extremely powerful. On top of this, we should have access to a Tincture that gives us a 100% chance to stun enemies that are on full life, and all things considered considered it should be an absolute blast. Now my own addition that I have made to this build and what I am personally going to be doing is I will be using the new Warden Ascendancy as well as the 30% move speed whenever you have no gem socketed in your boots. In the later stages of the game, this build surprisingly enough isn't really that socket starved and I've decided to craft a pair of boots that have an Abyssal Gem in it. This Abyssal Gem should give us some extra stats and the additional movement speed plus the effective flasks that we're going to get from our tinctures should allow us to be going in the 450 to 500 percent movement speed range and this will be even more significant if we end up having headhunter buffs from the jewel or from headhunter itself or maybe even from some tinctures so if you want to go fast and you want to farm a bunch of currency early on in the league this might be a good choice now if you're new to the channel make sure that you subscribe and without further ado let's get into it so there are three POBs that we're going to be looking at real quickly. There is an early POB, which is going to be like leveling information, some early skill trees, as well as, you know, some basic gear. A crit POB, which is when you're going to transition into the crit version of the build once you've got like a halfway decent crit bow early in the league. And then the final tornado shot POB that I'm going to be swapping into 
probably as soon as I get some decent gear and farm up some like Alk and Go maps for a day, it's most likely when I'll be transitioning into that. Now beyond that, something else I have added is that there are quite a bit of notes here, once again, as, as best as I could. Shout out to Havoc for some early leveling stuff, um, Rue for a lot of that tech that I was showing you previously, and Tuna, um, I referenced like one or two things about his tree to see what he was doing compared to what I thought was best, and I did make one or two changes because of that, so shout out to them. Now, once again, there is a decent amount of stuff in here talking about like the new ascendancies and all that kind of good stuff, and I will talk more in depth about this in a little bit. However, I have added in a bunch of early Atlas trees this is a currency generating strategy. That's the purpose of even going this build. So I felt it was fair that I would put in all three of the early Atlas trees. There's links to these on Peewee Planner, as well as like how you should be running them, what you should be doing and all that kind of good stuff. We'll go more into depth in this later. So starting out with this early POB, these are very basic items, stuff that you should be able to get in Trade League, absolutely no problem. We're talking like a 600 DPS elemental damage bow, just, this is in essence one mod and crafted attack speed. This should be no problem whatsoever. A basic quiver, this is essence crafted. Get life, get added elemental damage, um, get anything you can on here that's halfway decent, crafted attack speed, and then just like evasion life gear. Evasion life, a little bit of accuracy, some minus mana cost, and stats is essentially it. When it comes to the skills, there is some leveling skills that are in here. We've got Galvanic Arrow and Shrapnel Ballista as we did before. However, do be aware that when we're swapping at level 28, roughly, to Lightning Arrow, we are going to be using these Mana Forged Arrow setups now. These are a little bit different from what you might be used to. This is the new way that a lot of people are playing this build. And in my opinion, and from my testing, it is significantly smoother. It may not be as much damage, but it's close and you don't have to worry about dropping down ballistas or dealing with any of that headache. You just go in, you shoot the boss, and it does the damage. Another thing to note here is that these POBs do not have any gems in the boots. This will be difficult for some people, hence why I said most people shouldn't just blindly follow this POB. There are no gems in the boots, and that is on purpose, because the Warden of the Magi has this node called Oath of the Magi. And what this does is it makes it so that 30% increased movement speed if you have equipped boots with no socketed gems. So I am gonna be using this to zoom through the campaign. I'm gonna get this as soon as I can, zoom through early maps and just have my movement speed be insane, essentially. When it comes to the leveling trees, it's pretty standard leveling trees for what you would expect from me. They go act by act and they should be Pretty easy to follow, showing you the progression of where you should be going, what you should be getting. The next POB is going to be a crit transition. This is where you're moving to the crit version of the build, taking crit nodes on the tree, dropping a lot of extra points previously that we don't need anymore, and adding in a bunch of additional ones. The time that you should probably swap to this is whenever you get a good crit bow. If you can get a bow that has, say, just some elemental damage on it and a pretty decent crit chance, probably like a spine bow or something like that, you can swap over. It All that it requires is the base crit bow that's it. However, don't swap to this too super early. If you cannot get a good crit bow and you're losing a lot of elemental DPS on your bow, you probably shouldn't be switching it. Other than that, we've added in a few slightly better pieces of gear. This is probably in like yellow-ish maps that you should be trying to swap to this. Using your initial money, if you have any, on Hiri's Truth and Death Rush. These are just going to be able to push you through that early portion of maps and try to get some basic mods on your gear. This is when you're trying to finish your spell suppression and stuff. Getting some good flasks going and as well as whatever tincture you can find. We don't really know which ones are going to exist at this point. When it comes to the skills, we are still Lightning Arrow. However, we are once again using the Life Tap with Storm Rain and Blast Rain. If you get a five link, you can add in Power Charge on crit here. We'll help you cap your crit a little bit better. Beyond that, once again, just pretty basic stuff. Sniper's Mark on hit, some movement, Steel Skin, and once again, nothing in your boots. At this point with Warden of the Magi, you probably should be able to figure out where you're going here. You should be going into like Oath of the Magi, Coated Blade, and you'll probably be able to get nature's concoction here for some extra, you know, flask effect as well as charges. This should help you keep up like your Quicksilver and stuff pretty frequently. However, I don't know that you will have the fourth point here because it requires an end game boss, which we know essentially nothing about. Lastly, we have the end game tornado shot tree. This tree is relatively similar. There's not a lot of respecting that you'll have to do, but this is going to be using the new setup that I told you about earlier with Warlord's Mark. The gems have changed a decent amount. We've got like Berserk and stuff. Our auras have swapped around slightly as we are attempting to get 95% evasion chance. And once again, 
no sockets in the boots. When it comes to items, this is quite a bit of gear. One of the big pieces of gear that's going to be different here than what you might have known before is this Gale site that I talked about previously. Once we get more into the league and I see how everything works out, we can try swapping into Secrets of Suffering and moving the Gale site out, but you'll probably get some kind of basic update to this POB around then. Make sure to keep an eye on my stream over at twitch.tv slash bigducks as well as here on YouTube if you're interested in how all of this is going early on. Beyond that, a better bow much better bow it is like an essence crafted you know like a multi-modded type bow better quiver gale sight heres shadow and dust is a pretty good addition here since we're not using the combs gloves anymore this gives us rampage which is really strong one other notable addition that i talked about before are these abyssal socket boots these are relatively easy to make so you shouldn't worry too much about it there's information on how to craft them in the notes a well-rolled Heeries with some crit modifiers on it and some good rings and a belt with a bunch of resistances on them, as well as Dying Sun, which is pretty important, Watcher's Eye, Lethal Pride, Ancestral Vision. Now, let's quickly go through the notes. I don't want to spend too much time here. However, I have tried to give you some basic information here. It is not as in-depth as something like my SRS Guardian is. If you want a very new player-friendly, super step-by-step in-depth guide, I suggest that you go and watch that video instead. This is probably not for you however i have talked about like what affliction ascendancies and like what primalist stuff that you should get once you're able to swap over i have some basic questions answered like when you should get certain flasks throughout the campaign some end game stuff and finally let's go ahead and talk about our atlas trees so we do have three atlas trees here there is the initial wandering path atlas tree which i'll pop open right now the whole idea behind this atlas tree is that you are going straight for wandering path which increases the effect of your small atlas passive skills and then you're going to be filling in all of these small Atlas passives here. They give you a 100% chance for one monster in each of your maps to drop an additional connected map. What this allows you to do is zoom all the way up into tier 16 maps almost instantly, and you don't have to fully clear your maps if you're trying to push for them extremely fast. You go until you find your connected map and then you go kill the boss and you move on. Now, beyond those normal nodes that we've got, you are going to have to get some of these map chance to be higher tier nodes here. These are gonna help you fill out your pool of maps early on and they are relatively important. However, once you've gotten to this point on the tree, I suggest that you probably don't put any more points in until you're ready to swap to your Alk and Go strategy. You'll wanna get quite a few points and get your Atlas mostly completed if you can before you swap off of this. The next tree is going to be an early Alk and Go stream of consciousness map. The idea here is that you're just going to be alking a map putting into the map device and you click the button and you go. It's focused on getting as many different types of content into the map as it can without having to spend anything on it. And I've added in the sources of money that you're going to be looking for whenever you're doing this strategy. And we'll go ahead and open up the tree right now. Now, this is very similar to my tree from last league because it always works. This hasn't really changed significantly. However, there is one minor change here that you may need to be aware of. And that is going to be the fact that I have added in ultimatum chance here. Now, this is roughly like 30 or so odd chance that I've added in here and depending on how difficult ultimatum is you might need to just remove this as it won't be useful I don't know yet we don't know how difficult ultimatum is going to be talking about the rest of this tree the main things we're going to be focused on here is going to be things like expedition we are going to want to be farming like rog log books early on for lots of rog currency so that we can you know craft bows and other small pieces of gear to sell early on for money we're also going to be doing legions these just have a bunch of raw currency that drops for them typically really good for map juicing beyond that we will be doing short deliriums what i mean by short deliriums is we just want to get the mirror get to five rewards and then turn it off and keep going we don't worry about pushing as many rewards as we can just get what we can and get out of course we're also going to be doing eldritch altars i think that searing exarch is just overall better than uh, the eater of worlds for pretty much any point in the game because with eater of worlds you really are rolling the dice on getting those really big crazy divine and exalt altars and things whereas searing exarch just has pretty consistent results all the way through so my suggestion is you use this tree for quite a while until you're able to beef up your character to be extremely strong we're talking like six links and a good bow and maybe even transition into tornado shot and those kinds of things like even trying to get like heres and all that kind of good stuff really push these alk and go for probably most people the first couple days at least before you really transition into the final version which i'm going to be doing as soon as possible and that final version is going to be the late game juiced delirium maps we're going to be doing 80 percent delirious maps 
probably dunes. We're going to like Alcum, get them as difficult as they can be. We're going to be using a bunch of scarabs. All the information is here what your sources of money are, all that kind of good stuff, and we'll quickly open the tree. This tree is slightly different. We're still taking all of the Legion stuff because we are going to be forcing Legions into our map, and notably we do have things like Monumental here because it does give us an additional Legion encounter, so these nodes are just kind of good. But in this strategy, we are doing Delirium Orbs. I have videos about this all from lastly. You can find my strategies if you're interested in seeing like how this strategy works and you know like what the content looks like. But the TLDR is that you're trying to force as many monsters into your map as you possibly can so that you can get as many rewards out of your delirium orbs as you can. The main one that I always do is going to be for stacked decks. You can either open these early on in the league because they tend to be worth a lot of money or you can sell them in bulk. We're going to be adding in things like Breach. We're going to be adding in things like Harbinger. We will be adding in things like Abyss as well, just stuff that gets a bunch of enemies into the zone. Notably, we do take this Delirium node because it does give us plus one to count when we finish the boss, which is pretty solid. But do keep in mind, this is very difficult. You're going to need a lot of gear to be able to do this and probably the Headhunter Jewel and all those kinds of other things. So don't expect to be able to jump into this right away. And that is going to be it for the video. So as I said, this is going to be my league start. These are all of my plans on how I'm going to gear the character, what abilities I'm going to use, um, like my new Atlas tree stuff that I'm going to be working on. We'll see how ultimatum feels and all that kind of good stuff. I'm probably going to try to farm up to a headhunter and then use that to farm even more money for the next couple of weird builds that I'm going to play with the new transfigured gems, but we'll see what happens. Hope you guys have an excellent league start. As always, I will be live for the league start as well as probably for a few days after. So come and check me out on Twitch or here on YouTube. And remember, boys, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in Rayclast. And I'll see you guys in the next video.